<laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to Cook School Recipe Number 3 with Mrs McGonigal and Edward. Today we are going to make banana muffins. banana muffins with raisins and chocolate chips. We hope you enjoy our recipe. Just before we start, we have already washed our hands. Mm -hmm. We have sprayed our table with an antibacterial spray. And I just want to say a huge shout out. I got some really nice pictures after we posted our sausage cha-cha-cha yeah, recipe. Yeah. So we want to say thank you to Sally in primary seven, yeah. to Alice in primary yeah. two, and also to Una and Iona who made our sausage cha-cha-cha yeah. as well. So a big thumbs up from Edward and I. The pictures look fabulous. One more thing. What have you got today that you didn't have yesterday? Wobbly tooth. Edward has a wobbly tooth. So mummy is having to try very hard to get him not to put his fingers in his mouth when we're filming. Okay, so we're going to get started. We've got lots of skills on the go today. We are going to be weighing and measuring with both the scales and measuring spoons. We are going to be creaming ingredients together. We're going to cream together butter and sugar. We're going to be cracking eggs and we're going to be whisking and sieving as well. So lots of skills that we're going to be working on today. Edward, as always, is going to be my glamorous assistant and we're going to get started. So I'm just going to very quickly talk you through the ingredients that we're using. So we're going to be using self-raising flour. Now, today's recipe, we've tried to do things that hopefully everyone will have in their house. Maybe things like bananas that are going a wee bit bad and they need to get used but you wouldn't necessarily eat. An overripe banana is absolutely perfect for a banana bread. So, self-raising flour, number one. One. Second, we said was chocolate chips. Yes. We have got caster sugar. It does not need to be caster sugar. You can use a dark sugar, a brown sugar, or just a normal sugar is absolutely fine. We have got a few oats, which we're going to add to our recipe as well, being very careful that we don't spill them. We have got some bicarbonate of soda, some uh, ground sweet cinnamon, some sultanas, some unsalted butter, which I have had out of the fridge and it is a little bit soft to make it easier for Edward to cream together. We've also got two eggs. Now, Edward noticed that my eggs are a bit different. What is different about my eggs, Edward? Well, they're actually slightly blue in colour. So these are really nice um, leghorn blues, I think they are. So they are our eggs that we're going to be using today. And then, like I said, my bananas are slightly overripe, slightly bashed, and they are going to be absolutely perfect in our banana bread today. So we're going to get started. So as we're ready, what we have got now is we have got our scales on and what I have done to make it easier for Edward to measure out is I have cubed the butter and we need 110 grams of butter which Edward is going to start putting in the bowl. You must remember when you're doing this, if you've got an electric scale like us, we've got the scales set up, 2 grams, we're going to count in grams so it's 110 grams. I have put my large bowl on and then I have hit zero to make the measurement um, more accurate. It has, you have to make sure you press zero so we don't have the weight of the bowl. 110 grams of butter going in. Tell me what number we have in our scale for our butter. One, oh. Yeah, 100 and? So, one, one. Two. One, one, two. So 120. One. No, 120. Excellent. Edward has started creaming the butter and sugar together. What you want to do is squash the butter to the side of the bowl as best you can to try and get rid of the butter lumps. At the end of it, it should be quite light and fluffy depending on how well you've managed to cream the two together. to cream our butter and sugar together. Edward did an excellent job. 110 grams of butter, 110 grams of sugar and Edward's managed to cream them together. Our next job is to whisk, crack and whisk two eggs. Are you ready to crack an egg? Mm -hmm. Do you remember how to crack an egg? One. We tap it twice, our thumbs go in and then we open. So we're going to let Edward try first and we'll see how he gets on. Okay, one, two, one. Harder than that, it needs to crack. Well done. Put your fingers in. All over the bowl though, darling. That's it. Well done. That was brilliant. Oh. That's okay. 
And then we're going to do another one. And then you have two nice. eggs. Oh, mommy dropped that one there. So let's oh, try again. Yeah. Let's try again. Mommy will do this one, I think. One, two. Eh. And it goes. So as I said, we only had two eggs. Now what I'm going to get Edward to do is our next skill, and that is going to be to whisk our egg. Okay. And we are going to use a, a spoon. Oh. But before Edward does that, we just have to remember when we're doing it, we go round a, a, sorry, a fork. We go round in a circle motion to beat our eggs. Okay, on you go, Edward. Excellent whisking. So we have whisked our eggs. Edward does an absolutely fantastic job of whisking our eggs. And our next thing is our bananas. bananas. And we're going to mash our bananas in another bowl so that we've got all of our ingredients separate. The first thing we're going to do is peel it. Would you like to peel a banana? Yeah, I don't know. So we peel from the top and then you peel the rest and then pop it in that bowl. I'll peel another banana and we'll pop it in the bowl. And you can see that this banana is quite bruised and bashed but absolutely perfect for banana bread. So we're not wasting anything, we're not wasting any food at the minute because we just don't know, yeah it's perfect for banana bread. So we're not wasting anything because we don't know what we're going to be able to get when we visit the supermarkets. So this is a great recipe for using things that you have maybe got that are maybe slightly past their best. Well done. There you go, pop it in the bowl. Brown. Brown. It is brown. brown and then just brown, using brown, the same brown. spoon, it's not going to make any difference. Edward is going to... Spoon, a fork. Twice I've said that. Silly me. Edward is going to mash with the fork. Will you mash for me? Mash, mash it down. Mash brown banana. Mash. mash. That's brilliant. Mash. 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 What are you doing? Mash banana. Mash, mash banana. Now keep mash. mashing. Banana. That's mash, it. Mash banana. Now it doesn't need mash, to be completely banana. smooth. It's quite nice mash, to keep mash, some lumpy bits banana. of banana in there. They'll mash. add nice wee bits to your muffins. So what we have is our ingredients that we have used so far. In the first bowl, Edward, we have? Cheese, um, butter and... Sugar. We've got our butter and sugar and we creamed them together. In this bowl, we've got... Bananas. We've got mashed bananas. We used three. And then we've got our two eggs that we have beaten together. What we're going to do now is we're going to add them all into the same bowl. It will look a wee bit slimy and a wee bit gloopy and it might also look like it's slightly separated. Don't panic, this is nothing to worry about. But we're going to add them all in and Edward is going to start mixing. So I'm going to start Edward by adding the banana. Could you start mixing the banana into that bowl for me? And at exactly the same time, I keep going Ed exactly the same time I'm going to Whoa. mix in the egg. egg. Okay, that's it. So we have to mix How are you so fast? in a circle. Okay, we want to try and get these ingredients to come together a wee bit. After the egg, okay, you mix. Yeah, well done. And that is our wet ingredients all mixed together. So the butter, the sugar, the egg and the banana is all mixed together. And now we're going to measure out our flour. Next ingredient that we're going to add, this is self-raising flour. And Edward, how many grams do we need? Do you remember? Two, two, five. Two, two, five. And do you remember what number two, two, five is? Two. Two hundred. Two hundred and twenty. Superstar. Two hundred and twenty-five. So we need to add... 225 grams of flour into our bowl. I've put it on the scales again. I have put my bowl on and I need to put my sieve on and I have to hit zero again. The trick to getting this right is not to touch the sieve until everything is measured. So I put my flour in a bowl to make it easier for Edward to measure out. So there, Edward, is the spoon. Can you come back up onto the bench? It's us. You can go up on your knees if you like, so that you've got a better view of what we're doing. And we need 225 grams. So could you start putting the spoonfuls of flour into the sieve? And we're not going to touch the sieve until we have 225 grams. This one is yeah, slightly over, but that is not a problem. The other dry ingredient that I'm going to add to this is bicarbonate of soda. Now we need half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. 
I have got my teaspoon measure here. So either here is my tea, my uh, half teaspoon, sorry. So it's a half teaspoon that I want Edward to add. Would you add a half teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda for me? Mm -hmm. And then we'll sieve the whole lot. That's soda. It's bicarbonate of soda. Okay, not heat, just a leveled off and add it in. So that's a half teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. The next ingredient that we're going to add is the cinnamon. And we're going to add a teaspoon of cinnamon. You can add more if you like it. You don't need to add it at all if you don't like it. But we quite like cinnamon, so we're going to add one of these. Edward, would you hold my teaspoon now? So my teaspoon is slightly bigger than my half teaspoon. And I'm going to pour it on, I'm going to pour it onto your spoon. And then you're going to add it in. Absolutely perfect. So in our sieve, we have got 225 grams of flour. We have got half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda and we have got one teaspoon of cinnamon. Edward, let's sift our ingredients, okay? And we're going to sift, boys and girls, by taking the sieve and tapping the side of the sieve. Would you like to tap? Would you do the tapping? So you can see now the ingredients that are coming together in the bowl. If you think the ingredients are quite dry, you can always add a wee dash of milk, not too much just to make it that little bit wetter, but to be honest, we're quite happy with how it looks. So just have a wee look in the bowl there. Perfect. Like, like that. We only have one last, well actually we've got two last ingredients oh, to add into our bowl. Oh, no. The first one is our raisins. So we're going to add and some raisins chips. and chocolate chips. So I'm like going to put my scales back on again. And we are going to add 140 grams of raisins into 140. That, that, that is a big number. It is a big number. So we're going to add some of these. We're just going to pour them in. And Edward, can you see if you can tell me? So 140 grams. What number is in 140? One, zero, four. But what order do they come in? One. One. Four, four zero. zero. Right, on you go, start adding. Well done. Our last ingredient that we're going to add is some chocolate chips. So would you like to add these? Do you want to put your hand out, catch it? On you go. Mmm, yummy. Well done. The last thing we've got to do now is give it a, one final mix to mix all of our ingredients together. Fantastic. So everything is in here now. We have all of our ingredients in. We've got our chocolate chips, we've got our raisins. The last thing we have to do is move our mix from here into this little silicone mold. I'm not going to add any extra grease or anything to the, uh, or any butter to the silicone molds because they should pop out quite easily. And Edward is going to help me to spoon the mixture into our molds. Before they go in the oven, they're going to, Edward's going to give them a little sprinkle with a wee handful of oats. So we're just going to go over each one it, and you're just going to do a wee sprinkle on the top of each muffin of oats. All right, just a wee sprinkle, so that they're ready for the oven. Perfect. They look yummy, don't they? They're not even cooked yet. Yummy. Well done. I'm just putting them on random. Okay. Okay. Pop on anyone. Good boy. Well done. And that is them ready for the oven. They're going to go in now, and we will see you when they are cooked. Bye. So our muffins have been in for 20 minutes at 180 degrees and I'm just going to stick a little metal prong in and then take it out and it's come out completely clear which means our muffins are cooked and ready to come out the oven. We've got a wee visitor, Joseph's come to join us for the big reveal. Hello. Here we have them. We have got our raisin chocolate chip muffins completely cooked and we are hoping to maybe have these tonight with a wee bit of chocolate spread on them after we've had our dinner. They were in the oven for 20 minutes and all that's left for us to do now is say bye to you all and thank you for watching our third cook school video with Mrs McGonagall. And for our last wee bit, Joseph. Say bye-bye. Bye, everyone.